experience been like touring with your new show, Dolly Mixtures? Oh, wow, I was dreading touring, but I loved it in the end. I, um, sorry, it's weird because I've got him on. It's true, it's not a monkey-specific question, and yet I'm here. But yeah, <laughs> I'm even worse when I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm even more off-putting when he's not speaking. Kind of like the uh, monkey-sized elephant in the room, isn't he? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, can you, here's a question, can you feel a different audience reaction depending on where you are in the country? Like, are some people more up for audience participation than others? Uh, no, I think probably countrywide people are equally fearful and horrified about audience participation. They love it. Well, I don't know that they do, but they always seem to enjoy it afterwards. They hang around to meet you at the stage door. Well, I've been lucky. I mean, no, so far, no one's hit her. No one has complained or sued. No, or got divorced. But sometimes it feels like it might have brought up things that afterwards they have to talk to their family members about that they've said that clearly weren't true, but that obviously Nina thought were true. Right. Okay. I don't know, I'm not sure. That's fine, yeah. Um, how much of the show is planned in advance and how much of it is improvised? Um... The whole show is sort of planned in advance, but it doesn't go to plan. I guess there's a framework that I work through, and then, you know, the cockets, oh, they dally with her intentions. They do, they kind of say things that I wasn't expecting, and they have to backtrack and rethink, and it's difficult, hmm. he says. <laughs> uh, what's the most important thing for you to consider when you create a new character? I don't like your tone, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with his tone? Oh, no, it doesn't seem genuine. He's asking on behalf of someone else. What's the most important thing to consider when we, when we don't attack him? When we, uh, I don't like your tone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, what's the most important thing to consider when we're doing, uh, uh, when I'm thinking of a new character? I think you have to look at the face and make sure the voice fits the face. Mm -hmm. There's that. Make sure it's an interesting comedy angle. I don't go into any of these things. I mean, it's all kind of a gut thing. I'll pick up lots of puppets, and when one seems to come alive, you know, it's like in Harry Potter when the wand chooses you. Yeah, I suppose you could let the puppet choose you. And I chose you, and no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck your hand in, and I had no choice. <laughs> wow. Sorry, that sounds awful. You'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, do your family come and see you perform? Yeah, my family do come and see me perform, yes. Um, and uh, she always does a really duff show when they're in. I mean, it's very difficult when somebody that you know is in the audience, the whole performance sort of comes with them in mind, whether you like it or not. I feel quite biased, biased, you can't pronounce. Um, but that is what happens. But uh, I don't know. You don't keep it any cleaner when your 10 year old's in. I mean, my 10 year old has seen shows that weren't appropriate for, for 10 year olds, but he loves them and I mean, he understands it on the level he wants to understand it on and it's been fine. He's in therapy. He's so not. He's very well adjusted. Of course he is. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to perform for the family because it's cozy, but at the same time, you don't want them to worry for you. Yeah. And good Lord knows they do. Um, do you still get nervous before the curtain goes up? Um, no, I don't really get nervous. She sweats inside me. No, I don't. I mean, she shivers her, her hand it visibly shakes. That's not true. Um, but I do get a little bit nervous, I suppose. But once I'm on, I'm always fine. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Um, how do you spend your day ahead of a big gig? Oh, how do I spend my day ahead of a big gig? I don't know. I tankered. Am I nasty to your husband? I'm not. You know, lose keys and shit. Do I? Yeah, that's the kind of thing she does to try and distract from the fact that she's terrified. I didn't know that that was the case. I mean, I tend to put my fear on hold until five minutes before, but she's an arsehole all day until then. <laughs> uh, do you have any backstage rituals? Do I have any backstage rituals? Coffee? 
coffee. Sometimes it can make me a bit jangly, I suppose. I mean, uh, green tea. Yeah, I switch to that. I can't really get into it. What are the things? Um, I don't know. What do you do? Do you sing? No. You look at yourself in the mirror. Well, I have to. I put makeup on. She does her hair. I mean, that's not a ritual. That's just getting ready, right? It's ritualistic. <laughs> I think it's... um kind of uh, important not to think about it all day until the moment you have to just you know you have to think about it at the last minute when it's relevant yeah that last minute mm. panic mm. yeah mm. how did you first get into ventriloquism um through yoga that's not true i got into ventriloquism because a man gave me a teach yourself ventriloquism kit his name ken campbell was his name he was my kind of mentor and he he gave me that it was a mischievous gift he changed the course of your life completely and I would not have got into it otherwise because I wasn't interested in ventriloquism she hated it oh, I didn't, hadn't even seen it to hate it Laws did I didn't she thought they were weirdos it's not true they're not weirdos anyway I've since found out oh god you thought they were well everyone thinks they are initially well you are now yeah <sighs> well I finished yeah ta <laughs> um this one is the thing you first loved about comedy still the same now ah is the thing I first loved about comedy still the same now well, there's a fault in the question well in what sense oh I don't know based on a false premise that there was ever a thing you loved about comedy uh, let me try and think about what that might have been I don't know if there is anything in your head now. No, it's not much, is there? No. <laughs> Looking around, we've got nothing for you on that one. What do we like about comedy? What do I like about comedy? Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's still the same now. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. You like to laugh. You still like to laugh. <laughs> I remember thinking it was quite hip going up to Edinburgh when I was 16 or something and then I saw, like I think there was Rona Cameron and um, Jeremy Hardy and those kind of comedy store guys, Joe Brand. And uh, then, oh God almighty, sorry. Watch out, I'm going to start again. When I, when I was a, sort of a teenager, I went to Edinburgh and I started seeing the, the, the fringe and the, kind of the old comedy store people and it did seem like a good arena for speaking, you know, your mind or whatever. And, you know, so many years later, you got a monkey to speak it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, are you making notes for future jokes and characters continuously? Or do you have a writing process where you sit down and you sort of knock it all out? Um, I don't have a writing process. You go running, don't you, and hulking to think of something. I do that as well, yeah. I mean, I no, I just get my ideas through sort of thinking. Like, I, I don't switch off. I don't have office hours. I sort of think, uh, you know, I'll be lying in bed or whatever, and I'll think of it. What are you doing in bed? Nothing. <laughs> and I'll be thinking, I suddenly come up with an idea. But um, no, I don't know what the process is with writing. Do you shoot with a pen? Yes, sometimes. It's funnier when she puts me on and I just say stuff. But yeah, I mean, sometimes funnier stuff comes out with him there than not. Well, that was a definite cue for you to say something funny. No, you need a pen. <laughs> Great. Um, final question. What do you consider to be your biggest achievement and why? <laughs> Um, I consider, well, my biggest achievement, I think, was winning a Grierson Award for directing a documentary. Oh, here she goes, because I'd never done it before. She's so proud. But I was really surprised to win because it's not my arena and it was a different thing. So that was very exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. But um, that was a good achievement. And I think getting off script was a good achievement. I was, uh, yeah, that was worth doing. Because I used to think that I used to have to think up monkey jokes. Oh God, I know they were terrible, dire. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of them? Of course I do. You still use them. 
Like, why did the monkey fall out of the tree? Because it was dead. See, I got that off the internet, and that was the first thing I said on stage, and I got it off the internet. That's, that's how she built her career on an internet joke. And so, but I mean, since then, we then I started to try and write my own monkey jokes. Worse than that one. Yeah, I mean, they were all worse than that one. That's the best one. I'll never find out who wrote that. Mm. But uh, I don't really tell jokes anymore. I just sort of find my way out of trouble constantly. Mm-hmm.